Now, plenty more lefties content with my next guest. And yes, we've already seen Joe Biden lounging at the beach as states are devastated in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene, which has caused widespread destruction in Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, as well as Tennessee and Alabama, over 100 dead, many more still missing. President Trump has been on the ground. He's been speaking with those involved in rescue efforts. And they said they've never seen one this bad. Valdosta has been ravaged. The town is uh, very, very badly hurting. And many thousands are without power. They're running low on food and fuel. We'll endure. We will rebuild Valdosta and every other town that has been so badly hit. And we'll merge stronger, more united, and more prosperous than ever before. You're going to be stronger, better. You're going to learn a lot from it. And again, we pray to God for those that have been so badly injured and for, in particular, for the people that are no longer with us. Joining me now is senior editor-at-large at Newsweek, Josh Hammer. Josh, the response of the president and the vice president, it must be said, has been a uh, substandard. Yeah, I, I mean, that might qualify as the understatement of, of, of the century substandard. I, I mean, I mean, Kamala Harris, I suppose, was bothered on social media to stage this photo op where she was trying to bamboozle the masses here into thinking that she was actually doing something. But in this photo, as some very astute people on X pointed out, she she has the, those iPhone earbuds that plug into your phone, but her phone is on the desk and she's pretending to be on a phone call. It's not even plugged in. It's not even plugged in. And there's and there's a piece of paper in front of her as if she's taking notes from the FEMA director. It's a blank piece of paper. I, I mean, you know, if you're gonna fake it and try to make it look like you're making it, you know, you know, at least don't don't just do do it this poorly. I mean, I mean, try to try to make it look like you're at least attempting to cover your tracks for God's sake. Meanwhile, Joe Biden. Who, who has never been more clearly out to launch is confusing a labor strike with the Israeli strike on the Houthis. They asked him for what he thought about the Israeli operation in Yemen. He said he supports collective bargaining as if it's, as if it's a labor dispute with the United Auto Workers in a picket line. I, I, I mean, I mean, this is just catastrophic incompetence. This, this is very much this administration's version of what happened to Hurricane Katrina under George W. Bush is actually much worse in terms of the incompetence. But back then, Kanye West infamously said that George W. Bush hates black people, which was a, a racist smear back then and is a smear today. But this very DEI, so-called equity-obsessed administration on, on the FEMA website today, I, I took a look earlier and I noted that they have diversity listed as their number one goal for the agency or agency for, for federal disasters. You know, this equity obsessed administration is currently leaving behind overwhelmingly disproportionately working class and poor white people in Appalachia in North Carolina. It is a horrific, horrific look this close to an election. And I've seen just some absolutely appalling commentary online on social media from people who are almost celebrating this because it's hitting Republican heavy areas. I mean, that sort of... Uh, ugliness, callousness is just so depressing to see in America, but it certainly does exist. Now, moving on, Josh, we've also seen some interesting polling numbers regarding the Hispanic vote in America. Listen to this breakdown of the data from NBC's Steve Konacki. We ask a basic question of Hispanic voters, which party do you more identify with? 37% now say Republicans, 49% say Democrats. But again, look at how this has shifted in just the last dozen years. In 2012, this was a 41-point advantage for the Democrats. It has come all the way down to 12 points, Kristen, a 29-point drop uh, in terms of uh, that gap there uh, on uh, which party Hispanics identify with in just 12 years. And Josh, I wouldn't be surprised if those figures are actually even close, closer on election day. What do you think has been behind this trend? It's a fairly dramatic realignment in just 12 years. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. It's it, it's actually not just Hispanic voters. It very much does include Hispanic voters, but young black men in particular are breaking for, for Republicans this, mm. this cycle like never before. Donald Trump could probably get up to 25% of the young black male vote. You know, even just younger Americans, the 18 to 35 demographic, you include millennials and Gen Z in there, 
you know, it's looking clearly to be a single digit margin. A, a few months ago, it was actually well within the margin of error. I wouldn't surprise me if it ended up there. You know, the, the Hispanic vote ha has been shifting very slowly, but very steadily towards the right for a very long time now. You know, Hispanic people in America are disproportionately Catholic. You have some evangelicals. You know, they're good common sense individuals who don't like being pandered to. And the Democratic Party, when it comes to Hispanic voters, they try to pander them by just encouraging more illegal immigration. There are a lot of problems with that. One, it's deeply infantilizing and belittling to assume that just because you happen to share a native language, among other things, with someone, then you support people entering the country illegally. Second, and probably even more to the point, a lot of the communities where Hispanic Americans hit are the hardest hit by the illegal alien invasion and all the crime and the drugs and the dr right. and the human trafficking, the sex trafficking. So, so it's a totally toxic stew right now. You know, it's interesting. If Donald Trump wins this election, which I actually do predict that he's going to do, he's going to do so with, with essentially a, a multi-ethnic working class coalition, the likes of which the Republican Party has really never had in modern times. And, you know, again, as someone who I, I hope that he wins, I, I just hope that he keeps it up. Yes, it'll be interesting. You mentioned the black vote fracturing, uh, particularly amongst young black men. That's going to be fascinating to see because the... Uh, the black uh, demographic has voted 90% plus for Democrats for so many years. So to, to fracture that is quite an achievement.